you guys. I am Denise with Artist at Heart. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. How are you? So I want to share with you guys some of my favorite products that I just love and use almost every single day in a lot of different projects. So hold on, let me adjust my camera a little bit. Let's see. All right. If you guys can, say hi to me, chat with me, tell me where you're at. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, and thanks for watching. All right, so you guys, I want to share some of my favorite products with you guys, and I'm going to start with the Dixon pencils. These are a must-have, so I'm a certified art teacher, any kind of teacher or parent or someone that uses pencils. These are the best pencils you can get. They're so durable and they sharpen beautifully. So I love to draw and sketch with them and write with them as well. You can drop them I'm not saying you should drop them, but I don't know if you guys know this, especially teachers. I know teachers know this. If kids drop or you drop the pencil on the ground, usually inside the lead breaks. So if you try to sharpen it, the lead keeps coming out. That's usually why, if, if you're not aware of that. So these are so durable. I can sharpen these all the time and they just stay really, really strong. So I'll just hold it up there. But I'm going to do a real quick sketch. Today, I really want to focus on creating on black. But I just want to show you guys, even if you're creating on black, you can use a regular pencil. But today, I just want to focus on um, first, I'm going to sketch it out for you guys, just to show you how nice these pencils are, whether you're writing or drawing. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of sketch out in my sketchbook here. This is how I always warm up. So I'm just going to do a nice circle here. I've been doing a lot of snowmen lately, okay? So, and then I'm going to just do another one on this side. So that's how I sketch. I'm going a little bit darker so you can see it better on camera. But normally a sketch is pretty light. And then I would add my hat, okay? So again, you can add any kind of hat you want. But what I want you to notice is how nice this pencil works. So again, this is great for sketching, for drawing, really anything. And so once I lay out the composition of whatever it is that I'm creating, I would go over it darker. So again, like this head to me is, I need to make them a little bit rounder. And you can do different hands. Just again, I, this is really just kind of a practice. I want you to see how I sketch things out and try to not have them fall over. So I do have an easel up so you guys can see it a little bit better. How's that? You guys see it okay? All right. So again, I'm trying to do snowmen. You guys can make your snowman any way you want to. So again, I'm going to put a scarf here. And I'll do a scarf. And look, you guys, so the tip of the pencil is barely worn out. All right. It's amazing. So I haven't even had to sharpen it. It hasn't broke. It's this is why I love these pencils. All right, maybe I put a little. Are you guys wearing your scarves yet? Scarves and gloves. I guess it is. Just depends on where you're at. So we were freezing in Cleveland, Ohio at the holidays and now today is about 50 degrees out but then it's going to drop again the weather has been crazy here so i have had my scarf and hat out and gloves and then it warmed up for a minute and now it's going to get cold again so again i just want to show you guys how nice these pencils work so i'm just sketching out again a rough draft just to give you an idea of the composition and what I'll be creating today. So I'm doing some snowmen, snow friends, call them snow friends. Okay. Snow friends, snow, so snow, snow women, snow friends. I like snow friends. You could do any kind of mouth you want. We could do little circles. If I do one circle, it looks like they're singing. I like to make little smiles. 
So there you have it. Again, there's a little sketch. So let me just kind of, maybe this guy goes into this guy, right? Like maybe they overlap a little. And then this guy can go right, maybe goes right off the edge of the page. Maybe I make his hat a little bigger, like a babushka. What do you think? I want to make sure you guys can see it okay with the light. I got a new light in my room, and I can't tell if it's giving you guys a glare or not. So you got to let me know if you're watching. Tell me if you can see it okay. All right. So again, those are, that's how I would do a normal artwork. When I started, I'd warm up with a sketch. Love these pencils. I have them in every room of my house. Okay. I have a ton of them. They color beautifully. They erase equally as nice. Look at this. So once I do the sketch, I can erase my scribbles or I can leave them there. Okay. And what I could do then is just go over it darker with once I get the line to where I want it, I can go over it darker and you can even shade with these. So I'll show you. Here's like how I would shade. So I like to shade in the direction of whatever object it is. So as I'm doing it this way, see this, I can shade right over my drawing. So I'm pressing lighter in certain areas, like the hand going lighter, and then darker over here. So again, I love these pencils so much. They're a must, especially if you're a teacher. All right. And parents, you know what? Even though those unicorn ones with polka dots and different colors are really fun, these are the best pencil for durability, for writing, for drawing, for for shading, for erasing. I love them. I can't say enough about them. Okay. So now just again, as you, so I'm a certified art teacher. These are things that I've always had in my classroom and now I have them in my classroom and at my house. So I'm going to share with you guys just again, pencil sharpener quickly. These are the two that I always have. So one is a classroom one. It's a school pro and it has different sizes. So I have different age students who sometimes they have a thicker pencil. I use a lot of different colored pencils that are different sizes. So I have this sharpener that has different sizes that you can switch to. I'll show you guys that one first. So this is my Exacto Pro. So again, as I, after I'm doing my sharpener, you guys, I'll just, all right, beautiful sharpen. And then Real quick, I know you guys can't see me over here. <laughs> I rotated sides. Oh my gosh. So here real quick, I'm going to um, show you guys the other one. So this one, so if you guys don't have different size pencils, that one's really good. Let me see if I can move it over. I'll move them over to the other side so you guys can see me. Maybe you like it better when you can't see me. I don't know. <laughs> I've tried the overhead camera. I'm not so good at that. So the Exacto Pro, um, this one's called the Powerhouse, the Exacto Powerhouse. This one is the School Pro. So this one, they're both done by Exacto. I love these because they're so durable and they last forever. Okay, so this one's the School Pro. Again, it has all of these different, one, two, three, four, five, six different pencil sizes that you can use. Sharpens super easy, has the container that pulls right out to dump out your shavings. Love it. The kids can use it. I use it all the time. If you just have your standard pencil, this one's great for that. Just a single hole, super quick, super easy. Love them. Again, they both work great. Super durable. Had them for a long time. They sharpen. The pencil stays strong. And there you go. Voila. So here's my sketch again. I was practicing my sketch. I am real quick going to tell you guys the easels. People usually ask me because I sometimes I forget about the easel. So this is an easel. I have about 200 of these. So I do in-person paint parties. I have more of them around the room. 
But and again, you guys, this one's got acrylic paint on it. It's washable, but I like the way it looks. It normally is solid black, but I am an artist. I do in-person paint parties and I have an online um, class. So I use these easels all the time. They're awesome. This is the tabletop easel. And then um, again, I have about 200 of them. That's my biggest group I've ever done. And what's really nice about them, again, they collapse like this. So you can use canvas on hit vertical or horizontal. You just pop the legs out, this leg here. This surface is a little slick, so it's slippery, slipping a little. I should put see, I should put something on it, but a regular table is great. They don't slip at all on a regular table. So I will, I'll put something underneath it. And then these little ears here, they go out. So if your canvas is longer, you could do it horizontal. Or if it's, you know, you want to make it tall, you can flip it up vertical. All right. So th that's what's so great about this easel. So usually when I do an in-person paint party, I'm using 16 by 20 canvas. That's about the average size that I use. And again, these are great. They're lightweight. They're super durable. I have about 200 of them. So I always forget to talk about them, though, when I'm on here. Because, again, it's just like the base for whatever it is that I'm creating them. All right, so those are um, really, really nice. Let me see what else, because I want to teach you guys about the snowman. All right, so let's go to, let's go to the canvas, okay? So I've been using a lot of black, pro um, different products. Well, I let me stay in order for one second. Sometimes I jump around, you guys. Shocking, right? I don't know about you guys. So I sketched this out with the regular pencil, and this is what I use a lot. I practice in this. I paint in this. I use all different supplies in this. So you guys, these are mixed media sketch pads. Love these. Mine's 11 by 14. You can use any supplies that you want to in this, okay? Pencil, color pencil, crayon, marker, but it all stays in this binder. I have... Again, a bunch of different stuff. No matter, <laughs> no matter what I'm using, I do it in my sketchbook. So these are great for any supply. So when you see something that says mixed media, media means the product that you're using. Mix, you can use acrylic paint. You can use watercolor paint. You can use any kind of product that you want to in this. So I might as well start with that since I just used it. But I have been creating a lot on black lately. So this... Is the same thing except it's black. So these are amazing. I love them so, so much. It's so fun. And again, I told you guys I've been working a lot on snowmen. So I'm going to put my little book here. And again, you can use it in the landscape or you can use it in the portrait style. And you can use any supplies that would show up on black paper. So just like I sketched out a minute ago with pencil, it's not going to show up great here, but just enough for me to be able to see it, right? So I know you guys probably can't see it, but I want to put another snowman over here. We have snow friends, okay? They're snow friends. And I want you guys to see a variety of products that you can use on construction paper or black paper. So again, th this is a book, so you can do, I wonder if I have other ones in here. Sometimes I rip them out. All right, so I was painting snowmen. I didn't finish it. <laughs> Let's see how many other unfinished projects I have in here. I have markers. Okay, and I'll show you guys those too. But it's really, really fun to create on black. I just think it's fun. So let me show you, too, the, um, these are construction paper crayons. They're really, really fun to use, even if you're an adult, okay, like me. I'm Well, I'm kind of a kid at heart. So I do like using these construction paper crayons. They sh they're made for construction paper, okay? So they are... Let me highlight them here. If you guys are on Amazon with me, I have a, a carousel and you guys can see all the products that I'm highlighting. All right. So these are called construction paper crayons. I'm surprised more people don't know about these because they're so fun. And they come in a class pack too. So if you're a teacher, get the class pack. The kids love these. And you can color on any color construction paper. It doesn't have to be black. 
but it's so fun to do white on black or color on black. And again, I was doing another snowman over here, snow person, snow friends, whatever you want to call them. See how nice the colors? And the best part is it's mess free. So it doesn't smudge. So I really love oil pastels too, but oil pastels smear and they're messy. I don't mind getting messy, but they definitely, oil pastels get under your fingernail. They smear all over. I'll tell you the custodian was never really happy with me when I used oil pastels because it would get ground up in the floor. So these are really mess free. They color beautifully. Now the colors, that's the only thing I want to tell you guys. I should show you the colors real quick. The colors are very different than your traditional. So this one, I wonder if they have names on them. I never really looked. So they don't even have names on them. I, If I had a, a different job, I would love to name colors. So like this one, this is an interesting color. It's almost, what would you call this? Watermelon? It's um, of course, if I was going to call it something, it would be a food name, but it almost reminds me of a pretty watermelon color. It doesn't have a name on it. So the colors in the construction paper crayons are not traditional. Like you don't have, this is the closest to the red that you're going to get. And again, this is more of a watercolor shade. but it's really pretty. I really like it. And you know, you can make any kind of hat. It doesn't have to look like my hat. That's what I always tell my students. Do your own hat or match your own hat. Like make your snowman have a scarf and a hat that you wear. That would be cute. like that maybe. And then you could give them a scarf. Well, here's what I want to do. I want to show you guys the different colors so you can see how they show up on black. So again, there's no name on this, but I would say it's really a pretty color, like a, like a watermelon blush almost. Okay. And then how about, well, let's go right to a pink. So this one, this pink is lighter than that one I just used. So let's see what it looks like here. It's close to it, but it's a little bit lighter. Can you see the difference? And it doesn't smear. It's so awesome. The color's like a crayon, but it's made to show up on construction paper. Again, you can use any color construction paper that you want. Let's try another color. Okay, so there's no name on this, but I'm going to try. So this looks like an orange. It's almost like a terracotta orange. It colors. Do you see it? Can you see a difference in them? So in this box, you have 16 different colors. Let's try the yellow. The yellow shows up really nice. So the yellow shows up more because of the contrast, right? Because you have a lot of contrast with the black background. So let's see what else we could try. There's a purple. There's actually two different purples. One looks more like a maroon and one looks like a deeper purple. Let's try them both. Let's see the difference. So you have this one. Let's try one more. We'll try the darker one here. And then you have the darker one here. So one's just a little bit, this first one I used looks like a little bit more maroon, has a little bit more red tone into it, right? 
So again, you guys use your favorite colors. Let's see. This one, so there's a couple different blues. There's like a turquoise blue, like my shirt, and then there's like a bluer one. They're pretty close. Let's try them on this guy and see. Let's give him a scarf too. So look at the difference. So this is the bluer. That's the bluer construction paper crayon. And then I'll show you the green one. Well, it's like a turquoise, like a green blue. So they're pretty close. This is the one. Pretty close. And then I use, look at the three. They're pretty close to each other. I used the one with more green for the hat. So I'm going to go right into that one here so you guys can see. So they're pretty similar, right? And you could even overlap them if you want, blend them together. Don't, won't smudge, which is what I love. Let's go back. Let's just so you can get an idea of the difference. Do you see it? And if you want to blend some of the blue into the hat, maybe I want to put some of the blue here to show. Can you see that? The difference in like the rim of the hat to the top of the hat and blend it together. Maybe I even put some snow on there. Maybe I outline it. How fun is that? Let's see. Let's go back to... I know there was an orange. Let's go to this orange one. Let me see how the orange shows up. So there's one little guy's nose. And if I color that over harder, it would show up more. So again, you can layer it. And you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. It doesn't even have to be a carrot nose. I don't know. Just I like to say, think outside the box, right? Do what you like. All right. So there, again, construction paper crayon, 16 colors, really fun to use, really fun to experiment with. I wanted to show you guys also what you could do. Really fun before I get to the other stuff is, so these are called construction paper crayons. Love them. I'm surprised, again, that they're not more popular and more people, I just don't think people are aware of them. So another one of my favorite products is the gel markers. So these work great too. This is a pack of eight. And again, the same thing as the colors are not quite as traditional. So you still have your green and your yellow, but there's not really a true red. They're really bright. So let's see. Let's go with the blue. Let's go with the blue. So just like the Crayons, they shut, they're made to show up on color. They're made to show up on construction paper or darks. So let's, let's let me outline this guy. So it doesn't show up instantly. It like almost like magically appears after it dries. Can you see that? Maybe I should do it outside. I'm trying to outline it. It almost gives the appearance of chalk. If I were to explain it, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some on the outside so you can see the difference. So let's say I want to do a snowflake. I'll do a plus here. Now watch it appear. Do you see it drying on the, isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, I love that. Kids love it too, you guys. So again, I'm kind of a big kid at heart, <laughs> but these are really fun because it does take a minute or two to appear. So there's a plus, and then I would do a diagonal line and a diagonal line to make my snowflake. And maybe I put a couple little dot, 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 
dot. So I like to think real simple. Again, I like to teach people real simple, basic techniques and fun stuff. I love experimenting with art supplies. Love it so much. So again, I'm going to show you another so snowflake. I think you can see it easier. Like here I was doing it, but I don't think it's quite as easy as I'm outlining as it is if it's separate. So here, let's do another one. So this is how I, I teach people how to do snowflakes if they want. Of course, you can do a snowflake different than this. I do a plus sign. You can watch it magically appear. <laughs> and then a diagonal line and a diagonal line. And then after you do that, I could do dot, 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 dot. Okay, so that's the blue. That's the blue job marker. Let's go to a different color just so you, again, you guys can get the idea. And do you see how it just takes about, not even a minute, a few seconds, but it just shows up slowly? It's very cool. Let's try white. White will be really pretty on the black. So the strongest contrast, right? So again, and it's got the pointy tip and the broad tip if you turn it to the side. So let's start with a little plus over here. Plus, diagonal, diagonal, dot, 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 dot. And I could just put more dots. I could just put a whole bunch of dots, right? Dots are good snowflakes. The key to snowflakes is you want them scattered. You don't want it to look like a pattern, right? So you want to kind of make it look like a flurry. If it, if they're too perfectly spaced together, it looks not natural. So we want it to look organic or natural. Okay, so there's the white one. How about, you want to see purple? Purple's my favorite color. love purple. All right. So let's, I'll just start doing dots so you guys can see the different colors. Dot, dot. Wouldn't it be fun if snowflakes were different colors? What if the snowflakes came down purple? Ooh, that would be fun. What if they changed, depending on, I don't know, the temperature or something, the colors of the snowflakes. Maybe some days they're purple and some days they're blue and some days they're pink. I don't know, that would be fun. All right, so that was a purple one. How about pink? You guys like pink? Again, this this pink is almost like a watermelon color. Now what's going to happen is instead of it looking like snow, it's going to look like confetti. We're having a party. Oh, I don't know if I can sing. Not that that was singing. <laughs> That was as close to singing as you're going to get, right? From me, at least. But anyway, these are one of my favorites. Just make sure you cap them tightly, right? Make sure you hear it snap, as I would tell the students. Really fun, great, different kind of project. Clean, neat, easy. All right. So, but again, these are just things that I'm showing you guys that work great on, um, they work great on dark surfaces. All right, so let's move on. So let's go now to, I didn't really realize I was, all right. I'm showing you guys the product that I'm going to paint with. So you guys, I am going to use, hold on, I got to find it in my carousel. Oops. There you are. Okay. So I just used neat, clean, easy to use, great for kids on black paper. But let me tell you something again that I use all the time personally and in my paint parties is the Folk Art uh, multi-surface paint. Love it so much. So again, you can use it on any, let's get rid of some of this stuff. Let's make some space, okay? <laughs> So you guys can use this on any surface. That's why it's called multi-surface. I love it so much. So here's what I, and I'm just working on this one, but because it's multi-surface, you guys, it can go on glass, metal, 
um, canvas, wood, whatever surface that you want. That's why it's called multi-surface. The best part, so we do, I actually have a party on Saturday. We're doing wine glass paintings. So I'm going to use the multi-surface paint for that. The other reason that I wanted to talk to you guys about this for today is that the nice thing about the multi-surface paint, actually, I'm going to keep this one with just the crayons and the markers, but I'm going to move on to a canvas. So let's go to... Hold on, let me... That's too shiny. All right, I'm going to go... I'm going to get... I'm going to do a big one. <laughs> Brand new, big one. Okay, I have these in the carousel as well. All right, here we go. This is a framed, stretched canvas. I'm going to use it horizontal like this. All right, let's prop it up so you guys can see it. All right. Try not to get it to slide down. How's that? Okay. All right. So I love creating on black canvas. And I love creating with, uh, again, the multi-service paint. So why do I like the multi-service on canvas? You guys can use regular acrylic paint on dark background, but you'll need a few coats of it. The nice thing about the multi-surface paint is that it's very opaque. Opaque means you can't see through it. So if I was using a traditional acrylic paint on black, I probably would have to use a couple coats and I would wait for them to dry. So I would put one coat on, wait for it to dry, add another coat. With the multi-surface, I only need one coat, including white. So if I'm using, um, uh, Again, I could sketch it out with pencil, but I think if I sketch it out with pencil, you guys might not be able to see it. You want me to try? No, I don't know where. Here's my pencils. So again, I like to sketch out stuff. Let's see if you guys can see it if I if I do it real quick. Um, hold on. Can you see that? Yeah, you can kind of see that, right? So I'm just sketching out. I'm going to do snowmen. Today I'm working on snowmen, okay? So I'm going to do our snow friends right here. And it's okay if it goes off the side. Can you guys see that okay? I think you can. Now, what I would do, again, is use my multi So you got to shake it up. So multi-surface paint. I have, a, I probably have probably more than 200 of these. Uh, again, you guys use your favorite colors. Use whatever you want. I'm going to use white because I'm doing snowmen. Snow people. No, not snow people. How about snow friends? Snow friends. That's my new name for them. Snow friends. So here's what I want you to see. One coat, you guys. One coat of the multi-surface covers the black canvas. That's why I love this stuff. And I would just color over my pencil lines. So my pencil lines, most of the time I don't even draw pencils, but I did it just so you guys could see. Usually I just go right into it, depending on what it is that I'm creating. And if I'm doing an in-person paint party, I usually ask them, do you want it pre-traced? Or would you like to do it freehand? Because some of the um, customers... They want me to trace it out for them. And then I teach them the painting skill. And some want to do the entire project themselves. So again, this paint is super opaque. Isn't that nice? No smell. That's really, really important to me, you guys. So uh, I went to art school. I was around enough toxic fumes and turpentine and all that other oil-based paint, which I actually love oil-based paint, but the fumes and the chemicals and the cleaning solvents, I, I don't use it anymore. So there's no smell, non-toxic, multi-surface. 
how opaque. And again, is it perfect? No, we're not going for perfection here. I like to call it fun art, not fine art. Okay. So again, I think art is really, really relaxing. I like to create. I love, I love to teach people. I love to experiment with new products. That's like one of my favorite things. And I love to share what I've learned with you. And I'm learning all the time. Okay. I'm learning new techniques. I'm learning about new products how to use different things. I love to, you know, follow other artists and learn how they're using different products. I taught kids for 20 years. I taught uh, in the Cleveland schools for over 20 years. So I've taught all ages and abilities and I still do. So I teach really from ages four to a hundred. I think the oldest person I painted with was wine glass painting and she was 104. It was amazing. And she did not care. She had so much fun. She wasn't worried about what it looked like. That's probably the hardest thing is people are so concerned about making a mistake or ruining whatever it is that they're doing. And I say, you know, art is like anything else. The more you do it, the you know, the better you're going to get it, at it. So just keep creating, keep doing it over and over and over until you like it. It's like anything else, like cooking or playing a sport right? If you're LeBron James, you think LeBron James still doesn't practice? Of course, LeBron James still practices. So he doesn't, you know, miss a hoop and then quit. And art is the same thing. Just keep doodling, drawing, practicing, whatever inspires you, whatever's around you that you like, look around your room. And, you know, if there's like a vase with flowers in it that you like, practice sketching it. So I am doing a, um, wine glass painting this coming weekend for a uh, bridal party and the bride loves mountains so i have been uh i just started before we went live here and i was practicing the mountains on the wine glasses so again i'm gonna i don't know if you guys like it just white or colored in. I think I'm going to experiment with both. I'll do another one where um, they're colored in. I think it needs some color. I love color. Now, so let's just say for a minute on the wine glasses. If you don't, you don't have to bake them. So if you let it set and cure for two weeks, that means don't wash it for two weeks. So Stephanie, how so, sorry, Stephanie, I'm just seeing your comments right now. Hi, Stephanie. So he, I was just talking about that. So this is how you cure your wine glasses. You can bake them, but it smells and I, and I don't like it. I don't like the smell, one, because I told you I'm really sensitive to smell. And two, it can also change your pretty crisp white and give it an antique look. So I don't like that either. So I don't recommend baking it. This is what I tell people. I tell people, don't wash it for two weeks. Your paint will set in two weeks. Then you can wash it. People do put them in the top shelf of the dishwasher. I always say hand wash. Anything that's hand painted, you guys should always hand wash. It'll just last more. And whenever you're painting a wine glass, try not to go too close to the top because you don't want to drink on top of it. Okay. So usually like a half an inch or, or more down from the rim of it. But again, that's what the multi-surface paint is so great for is, um, yeah, that's the multi-surface paints. And Stephanie, if you come on over to Amazon, you'll see all of the products. So artistatheart.live on Amazon. And I have the link down below. See, this is my phone. I'm watching you guys. See that right there where it says folk art? So if you're on Amazon, you can see everything that I'm using. So it just makes it easier for you to find it. Um, so come on over to Amazon if you want. I put the link again in the description. Hopefully you guys see it okay. All right. See, I lost my train of thought and I lost my paint. Shocking. Not really shocking. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one. See, again, one coat of paint. Even on the wine glasses. On the wine glasses too, I, that's one coat of white. And this works just like any other paint. You can blend it. It dries really quick. 
There's no odor, which I love. But I meant like the thickness, the, you know, dry time pretty quick, the blendability, very nice. But again, it's the opaqueness that I really like. And all right, so let me just finish this. All right, because I'm being lazy. I'm just dipping, my, <laughs> I'm just dipping my brush right in the bottle. So that's why my paintbrush looks like that. My, I think my snowman's growing. They seem to be getting bigger and bigger. I always tell people start small because it's going to grow, especially as I'm painting on the side. Like I, I feel like I'm a little bit cockeyed because I'm off to the side. Let me, let me move, move over here a little bit because he's a little crooked, huh? He's a little bit crooked. It's hard to paint from the side, <laughs> but I don't want my big head in front of the camera. My big head's going to be as big as the snowman head in a minute. All right. And I want to give you another tip. You're always going to go through more white than any other color, and you're always going to have left more black so you always use a little bit of black and you always use a lot of white so usually i'm ordering extra white paint because you blend right you want to blend and mix colors and add highlights make some colors lighter so i'm always going through the white way more than the black And Stephanie said it, and that's with multi-purpose. Yeah, it's called multi-surface. Where'd it go? See, multi-surface, multi-surface paint. Okay, that's a little bit better, right? We're not going for perfection, okay? I would make myself nuts if I try to be perfect because I'm, I'm really not a very neat person. I try. I try pretty hard, but it doesn't always happen. All right, so let's see. What colors do I want to do the hat now? Let's use something fun and pretty. Do you guys like pink? Shall I try the pink? Maybe do a pink hat? So this is, again, the, so you just give it a little shake. Let me grab another brush. All right, so I'm just dipping in the bottle because I forgot my palette. My palette normally consists of a plate, but I don't see them around, so I'm just going to dip in my bottle. They're little bottles, okay? So they're cute little bottles. Shake up nicely. Uh, how about if I do this one pink here? Look at that. Nice, right? Oops, I just got into the wet white. So look, this is, again, when I tell people, don't worry about making mistakes. So I'm just going to blend that white smudge that I just got in there right into my paint. No one's going to know but you and me. It's our secret. Shh. I make mistakes all the time, you guys. So that's really the fun of painting with acrylic paint, even multi-surface, is no one knows your mistakes. You just cover them up. Just blend it in there, right? There. How's that for my hat? And again, when I'm using my paintbrush, I try to paint in the direction of whatever it is that I'm painting. So I think I'm going to go over this a little bit right there. Now, if I, let's just say I want to put a pattern on here. Maybe I want to do a pink hat with purple stripes. I have to let it dry. Okay. So I would, and it's going to dry pretty quick. 
I'm going to just give it a few minutes. Maybe I do. What do you think? So I'm, I didn't draw this out, so I'm just kind of freehanding this. Let's do this. So I'm reading, sorry, I'm reading Stephanie's comments. Stephanie, thanks for coming to the tree painting. Um, so for this particular painting, I just used, just to save time, I used a new brush. So normally if I'm doing a paint party, so Stephanie, who's commenting here and joining me, thanks for joining us, Stephanie. I would have you guys rinse out the brush and dry it off. So a wet brush, really wet, will thin out your paint, okay? And I don't want to thin this out because I want it to be opaque on my canvas, right? So same thing with the wine glass painting. So Saturday I'm doing a wine glass painting in person. So every time we switch the colors, we're going to wash off our brush and we're going to dry it off. So it varies depending on what it is that I'm painting. The tree, we I believe we painted from light to dark. So I just kept jumping from color to color, like yellow to orange to red to, you know, and as I did that, I don't think we, we washed it off. But if I was going to go from red to purple, I would probably rinse it off. See, look, I got a chunk of pink right, right there. Yeah. I'm trying to make it look like it's sitting on his head. So yes, as you guys paint and change colors, you want to rinse it off and dry it off. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but you don't want it dripping wet. So if your brush is dripping wet, it will drip down the canvas. You don't want watermarks. Everything else you can fix. All right, should I put a little pom-pom on, on the top like up here? Or should I use a different color? I'll use a different color. I still feel like this is too high up. Is that getting better? Does it look like it's sitting on his head? I know the style is like a skull cap, right? That's the style, but I'm trying to make it look like a winter hat. <laughs> so maybe this comes out a little bit more. Like that. I think that looks better. I think it was just too small. Getting a little better? I think so. All right. Okay. All right. So let's do the other hat. Again, if you're going to switch brushes, you guys can wash it off, dry it off, not drop it against the wall like I just did. <laughs> Oops. All right. And then what do you think for the next color I use? So the one I just used is um, bright pink. That's, that's a good color. Bright pink. That's what I use for that hat. This is again, the multi-surface paint. And I think I'm gonna do, this is, I'm trying to match my shirt. How about this? This is called Aqua. I'm gonna give it a shake. Let's do Aqua. All right, again, I'm gonna kind of wing it here. I'm not gonna sketch it out first. But see how it just glides on. 
and it's really opaque, which means not see-through. And you guys could do any kind of hat you want. I forgot what those skull caps are called that are so popular these days. I've been a skull cap, but I don't wear them. I think it made, made my, my head look even bigger. That almost looks like a beret. That looks like a French beret, doesn't it? I should, all I'd need is for a little ding, you know, one of those little, I have them over there. I could put it on, but I'm trying to make it look wintry. So I could be making, you know, French snowmen and put a little beret on him with a paintbrush. That would be kind of cute, wouldn't it? Or should I make a winter hat? What do you think? Does everybody know what a beret is? If I made a beret? Or should I just stick to the hat? All right, I'm about to do it. What do you guys think? Here, I'll do You know what I'll do? I'll do the little, this is, how about this? I'll do this. Ding! <laughs> so you want me to keep it a beret, or do you want me to make it into a winter hat? This is Pierre. No, we got to think of an S name. Pierre the snowman? No. How about, what's a good French name for a snowman? Snow person. All right. I still like Pierre. He could be Pierre. Why not? Pierre. Pierre and Penelope. How's that? And then you could give him scarves, right? So should the scarf match? I don't know. It's always cute to have a matching scarf. Especially for Pierre. Pierre lights to match. So again, I love this folk art paint because it's super opaque. Easy to use. Washable. Washes out with soap and water, you guys. Okay. Multi-surface. So the reason why I'm using it on a um, canvas you can use regular paint acrylic on canvas but you're going to need a few layers to cover the black with the multi-surface you only need one coat so again i'm just i love painting with acrylic it's definitely my favorite i love multi-surface because i love to paint on wood and metal and glass Another really fun project other than wine glasses. And again, you guys, if we have time later, I'll paint this in or maybe I'll do another video with just the glasses. But another fun project, if you like painting on glasses, to do plates. Just go to like Dollar Tree or if you have old plates, use the multi-surface paint. And then it would be for decoration or for a dry product. So I have like, I did them at, on the holidays uh, for with Christmas cookies right and i would give them to people so you could put dry product on it and the paint won't come off again and you're going to hand wash anything hand painted i do blessing plates where you fill the plate with whatever rice krispie treats my favorite chocolate chip cookies peanut butter and then um but anyway any multi-surface just think you know think of things that you like or that you already have that you can reuse and again do you guys have old plates or glasses that you're not using that's a great way to experiment. Nice little handmade gifts for people. There's Pierre's scarf. Is it big enough, you think?
I say start small because it's going to grow. And the same thing's happening to my scarf. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So there, how about if I make the bottom of the scarf now? Maybe it comes down like this. And then I could outline it a little or add a little highlight there. But isn't it cool how it just is so covering and it's really fun to be painting on black. It just, it just looks cool. Something different. And again, maybe I put a little bit of white in the, oh yeah, I dropped my white brush on the floor. Maybe I make the fringe at the bottom a little bit lighter. So I can blend it. Let's see what it looks like to blend, okay? So here I'm doing the fringe. I'm just mixing right on the canvas. All right, and let's mix a little. Well, let me put a little highlight in here so you can see the difference. All right, and so the what I was trying to do at the bottom was like show some fringe down here. So maybe I do more like little lines like that. Give it a little texture. Like that. And I can always add some black lines into it or maybe a different color. All right, that scarf's getting pretty wide. It kind of looks like a waterfall. I was not going for a waterfall, but that's what we kind of, <laughs> do you guys see the waterfall there? Oh, well, that's all right. We're just going to keep going. Uh, all right. Hey, Danny, how are you? Okay. Okay. So let's keep going. So what color should we use? Well, let's just stick with the pink. All right, you guys. So this is what I mean. I've got paint on me. It's washable. All right. So I am not concerned with um, getting dirty. I get dirty all the time. But it is washable while it's wet. I would say if you get it on your clothes, your carpet, I got some on my carpet, just wash it as soon as you can. Again, the longer it sits, the more it's going to set. I'm going to do a scarf on this guy, girl, whatever it is. Snow friend. So again, this is multi-surface paint. I'm using it on dark canvas to show you how opaque, which means not see-through this is. So I can do this entire painting in one coat. If you wanna add more than one coat, go ahead. I'm thinking one coat will do the job just fine. This color I'm using right now is called Bright Pink.
I'll make this one go, I think this way. What do you think? Let's try it. It won't look like a waterfall because it's pink. Maybe I do. How's that? Does that look like a scarf? I could make another piece of it. Like come off over here like that. Do you like it better? Single or double? You like it like just one or both of them? So what would I do if I didn't like two? When it was dry, I could paint over it with black, which would be like just like erasing it. You like it? You like the pink one or the blue one better? Now, again, you can paint the bottom of it. You can paint the snow people in white at the bottom. What I'll do, I'll, I'm just going to layer it just to give you, again, an idea of how to layer this kind of paint. All right, so again, I've got, this one is called Pure Orange. How oh, lovely. Give it a little shake. What do you think I'm going to do orange? Double. You like the double. Good. I'm glad you like the double. Maybe I should put another one on the, on the blue one. I'm just afraid of it getting too wide, but I could put another one on the blue one. Should I do that real quick before I do the carrot nose? Hold on. Let me see. Where should I do it? I'm thinking over here, maybe like that. How's that look? You like it better double? Yeah, you like it better double? Just one. Uh-oh. What does that mean? You like it better double or just one? Or you like double on just one of them? Well, I'll do it. And then, you know, what did I tell you I could do to fix it? I can paint over it black if I don't like it. So I, I, you know, I just have to experiment, right? And then I could always do another one a different way. I should show you guys all the different ones I have. Hold on. I forgot to show you these. Okay. So here I have this one I'm not done with. So Another thing you guys can do is embellish your canvas. I put little sparkly stones on there. You see that? So I just added some glue and some stones. These were left over from a different activity that I did. So I um, thought that that looked cute. And again, I wanted to scatter them around. I just still have to do the eyes and the mouth. You guys, I am going to be on New Day Cleveland tomorrow. If you're watching this live tomorrow at 10 a.m. on New Day Cleveland. Fox 8, I will be on, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'll be on and I'm going to be demonstrating all of these snowmen on there. So again, I'm going to be using my folk art paint with my black canvas showing and I wanted to not finish some of the artwork so that I could finish it on camera. I only have six minutes to do that. Here's another one I have here, you guys, different hats, right? All right, so here you go. Here's a single scarf with just one. Yes, I've been going on about once a month to do different activities. So they are so nice and kind. I love going on there. It's really fun. So again, here I have the single scarf. Here I have the double scarf. And you could do a top hat. You could put snow on the top hat. I used, again, the multi-surface paint on both of these. So I got them done quicker and easier. So again, because you I'm usually like on a time frame, so I have to get things done quick. Again, I have six minutes to paint this. So I'll be using a full art paint. I'll be using black canvas. So what I was gonna do real quick was layer the orange on top of the white. And let's see what happens with that. So again, this one is pure orange. I just gave it a little shake. Again, if you're using a different brush, you're gonna wash it out and dry it out.
Okay, let's do the carrot nose. So let's see, on the other one, I'm gonna make this one go off. I kind of liked it like that. So here's what I wanted to show you guys. It might look different with the white background and the black background. Do you see that difference here? So what would I do? That area, what I could have done is I could have made my carrot just on the white part. I'm going to give you a couple of options. I could have made the carrot just on the white part so that it was going up. Or I could have put a little bit of the white underneath the carrot nose. Or there's another option I could do since I didn't do either one of those. I'm making the carrot nose go off the side. What could I do to fix that? I could add another layer. So again, I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. And it's going to look different only because I have the white with the black and it's on both of those. So I would, again, I could have just added some white in the background and then put the orange on top of it. Or I could give it two coats. So let's see this guy here. And, I, you know, again, you change it as much as you want to. So I changed the carrot nose a little bit. I changed the hats a little bit. I say customize it however you want. This one I didn't even, so only one of them. See how I did the white on the bottom of the turquoise guy, but I didn't do the white on the bottom of the pink one? Do I have to? No. Would anybody, did you guys even notice that? So, again, that would be up to you. So I'm just going to give this a few minutes before I give the tip of the nose another coat. Do you think those carrot noses are big enough? Oh, I should have brought the buttons up too. What Another option, you guys, as you embellish it, the one that I was just showing you, what I did was I put buttons on there for their eyes, or you can do the buttons on the mouth. So I was just playing around with different ways you could add things to make it different. So again, here's a couple different options. And you guys, I have, I should show you. The, um, oh, hi, Philip. No, snowman. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat that. So here's what I want to tell you um, about the black canvas. So I am going to Hold on, let me show you all the different black canvases there are. I'm going to go first to, oops, give me one sec. I got it. So again, if you guys are on Amazon with me, I can highlight the different things. So I have a multi-pack of black canvas. So I have a bunch of them so I can do a bunch of different paintings. So my favorite size is 11 by 14. Okay. 11 by 14 is really nice. Um, so I'll hold it up next to my head so you get an idea of the size. When I'm teaching classes, most of the time I'm going to use 11 by 14. Love the size. It's really nice to display stuff. I also use 16 by 20 a lot as well. So, and it's just, again, really, really fun. These are stretch canvas on black. They come in a variety of sizes. Again, 11 by 14 is my favorite. And what you guys can also do if you guys are using canvas, you can use, hold on, I'm going to bend down. You guys can always make a template or I'd be happy to give you one. If you guys check out my website, I'll put the template up there and you can just color on the back with a pencil and trace it onto your canvas or you can use it as a reference and then draw your own or you can just color right on the paper and just print it out. So again, that's how we differentiate the instruction. Okay. We just use if you want, you don't even need the template, but if you want a template, I can give you one. Again, sketch it out, draw it out, trace it out, color right on here. It's up to you guys. There's just so many ways you can do this, right? 
Okay, so let's keep going. Let's see what else we could do to our snow people, our snow friends. So do you want, I think that they need to be painted at the bottom, don't you? Do you think that the snow people need to be painted or do you like the black? I like when you guys tell me what you like. Do you like the black at the bottom? So I want you to look at this one again. So we have down here is black and then this one's white. Should this be painted white, painted white? You want me to go back to the little one? Should I do this little one right here? Let's see. Or should I do the big one? I'll do the big one because I probably want, this one will be my display. So another reason why I like to do different sizes is the displays should usually be larger, especially if I have a big group of people. It's just nice for them to see from far away. So let's see if you guys like the, the light. How's that look? You like it better with the white showing? The white snowball? Maybe I do the white like coming out like that. How's that look? They don't look like they're flat, floating. Okay, well, that's good. Stephanie says they don't look like they're floating. Okay, good. I don't want them to look like they're floating heads. We don't want to scare anybody. We don't want them to look like they're melting heads either, right? So, all right, we're going to give them a snow body. We'll do this one. Let's do this one first and then we'll see if we should put a shoulder. Like, do we want the white to go over here? I think it needs a little white over here. Yeah, you're right, Stephanie. It definitely looks better white. So let's do the guy. Let's do Pierre. Rename Pierre. So you guys, just so you know, I bumped into the blue. It's already dried and it's smudged inside my white. That's how quick it dries. Pierre probably could use a little, what do you think? A little white over here too? Probably. Let's do this. And we can always outline them to separate them later. If they melt together, if they merge together.
So I love creating on black canvas because it just looks so nice. I've been doing it more and more. We did a landscape a few weeks ago with a group of people with pine trees on black and the pine trees and a starry night and it came out beautiful. We've done Van Gogh starry night and the black canvas, which looks really nice also. So there's so many things you could do. And mixed media means you can use a variety of supplies, right? So it doesn't mean the whole thing would be paint. You guys can, again, you can embellish it. You could add things on it. You can add words to it. So my snowman on the other side is looking a little funny. He looks a little funny right here, don't you think? Maybe he needs to come up a little. Better? How's Pierre looking? Or maybe his scarf needs to come out more. What do you think? Maybe his scarf comes out a little bit more round. Maybe like right here. Better. Do you like his, do you like his art hat? <laughs> yes. Oh, you're so funny. Okay. So Stephanie says Pierre has some nice broad shoulders. That's hilarious. All right. So. Okay. So now you guys, I'm going to put a little bit more orange on the nose just to cover it up where see how it didn't it doesn't look as even as the rest of it so let's just put a little bit of orange on there what do you think what about the pom-pom does this does this need a little puff on the hat maybe i don't know i'm thinking about it thinking about it. I want to fix this right here. All right. Yeah, Pierre, Pierre kind of looks like he's melted. Pierre kind of looks like a marshmallow. <laughs> hey, I told you guys we're going for fun art, not, not fine art. Okay. So maybe um, I'll think about the rest of it. I don't know. What I could show you guys next, how about, I don't know if I talked about this yet. I don't think I have. So again, one of my other favorite products, you guys, are the Sharpie oil base. Look at my hands. All right, sorry. The Sharpie oil base markers. They're awesome, okay? So these, again, are another amazing product. It's permanent, no odor. No odor is huge. So I, I'm gonna show you guys, these are permanent, okay? Watch. I can just do little dots on my wine glass for snow. I'm making mountains. Okay, so this is, again, a multi-surface product. This is Sharpie oil base. These are awesome on anything. If you guys want to, um, you know, write on any surface, and they're great for artwork, too. So here's glass. Now I'm going to show you how opaque it is on the canvas. So let's do a little, I'll do a little snowflake. So plus, and then I'll do two diagonal lines, diagonal, diagonal. And then maybe I put a few dots, dot, 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 dot. You could even add the dots on the line if you want. You like it better on the on the line? 
or off the line. So again, you're the artist, so you decide how you want it. Let's put another one over here. I could also do X, X, and then a horizontal and a vertical, and then some dots on there. You can make little hearts if you want to do little hearts. And you want to scatter them, right? Whenever you're doing, and you could do little, just little. Whoop. And remember, when you're doing snow, it want, you want it to be scattered. You don't want it to look like a pattern. Let's put another one. Oh my gosh, it would be so cute to do like a tongue with them catching the snowflakes. That would be cute. All right, let's do another one. X. A few more flurries. I just don't want him to stick his tongue out like he's sticking it out at Penelope. Pierre, yeah, right? It would be cute if we had him sticking out his tongue to catch the snowflakes, but then again, I don't want it to look not appropriate. How about that? So let's keep going. Let's put a few more snowflakes. You guys can totally make different kinds of snowflakes. They don't have to look like mine. I still haven't decided if I'm going to put a pom-pom on Penelope's hat. What do you guys think? Does Penelope need a pom-pom? This would be cool, too, to do stars if you guys want to do stars. And I think the full moon is tonight. Oh, you could put a full moon in the sky, too. <laughs> I'm just afraid if I did a tongue, it would not look appropriate. <laughs> See how, like, I started doing too many star or snowflakes and it looked like a pattern. So, what I'm going to do to break it up, I'll just change the size of some of them because I don't want it to look like a pattern. And I started doing it like a pattern. And even here, too, I'm just going to change some of the sizes. Just makes it more interesting. No right or wrong, just different. This would be cool, too, with like silver glitter. You could even write something on here. You could write, let it snow, snow friends, you know. A quart, like really tiny, like a quarter of the size of, um, who just said that? Philip. Philip said, make some snowflakes a quarter size for depth of field. Ooh, that's pretty snazzy. All right, like quarter of the size, like the size of a quarter? You mean like bigger? Like a bigger snowflake? Let's see. Um, is that too big? Is that too big? Maybe we need a little baby one. How about a little baby one right here? How's that for depth?
you know what else I could do to show you guys something fun is, all right, wait, let me finish real quick. Let me show you. I'll show you on here the other um, colors of these markers because I love them so much. So I showed you guys the white. Let me show you. So how, you got to shake them up, right? No odor, which is awesome. All right. So look, here's the purple. Look at how pretty that is. And it goes right over the black. No smell. That's so important to me. See that? Maybe I do. You, you guys didn't tell me. Yes, pom pom. All right. Yes, pom pom. This would be. How about purple pom pom? So here, because it kind of has. Now that looks like a snowflake on the head. So I'm just crisscrossing the lines. Okay, my pink is dry, so I can go. I just want to make sure it's dry before I put the marker on it because I don't want to ruin the marker. So. So the color is so close to the pink that it's not showing up as great on top of the pink. Let me get it juicy. All right, let's see if I got a little bit more juicy. It's hard to get a juicy while I'm up vertical like this. And I can make the pom whoops. I can make the pom cone go right off. The canvas, like my easel just went right off the table. All right. So you guys look, here's another example of a mistake. I My canvas just slid off the table, right? And I just did this big purple line. Now, if I was at a paint party, some people would probably have like a panic, <laughs> but no one would know that that's a mistake. I'm just going to keep adding the fuzzy little lines to come out around it. And then only you and I know that that was a mistake, right? Shh, don't tell anybody. So that's what, the, again, the best part about using these opaque art supplies is you can cover up anything. The key is, again, if you're layering, just let it dry. You like the pom-pom? Is it fuzzy enough for you? Is it big enough? Oh, you know what? Another one would be cute. Earmuffs. You guys, you could do earmuffs too. And maybe I just, maybe I add some white in there. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Stephanie says it's all looking amazing. We'll throw a little white in there. There you go. So now they need a face. They got their nose. They need eyes. They need a mouth. Is that white dry? We can use the, um, let's see if I have a black one here. All right, you guys. So I have like a thousand <laughs> or of these Sharpie oil-based markers. I always bring them to my paint parties. Okay. I always have them with me. I just, you know, again, I never know what people are going to ask me for. So I carry around a lot of stuff. And I'm thinking I want black. Now I got to see if I have a black. Oh, I do. Oops, I just swatted myself in the face. That's lovely. All right, hold on. Let's get it. That one might be old. All oh, right, with this one. Yeah. Hold on, let me get it juicy. No, I think that's a, you guys have had these for a long, some of them for a long time. All right, but I can do a regular Sharpie. So let's go back to canvas. I can just do a regular. So do you like the do you like the eyes better like that? 
or do you want them to be circle eyes? I had buttons on the other ones again. So I had buttons on the other one. We can do them with the eyes closed. I could do them with them open. I can make them like coal. What do you guys think? You think you want me to just do the smiley like that? Just gonna make sure it's dry. Again, so if you're gonna use marker on top of paint, you gotta make sure that the paint is dry before you do it. Otherwise it'll ruin the marker. Open, you want open? Hmm, let's see. Which ones could I do that open eyes? Let's see. You like it better open? No, I got to look at it because I got to make sure it's even. It's hard to create from the side. Do you like it better open? It doesn't look too creepy. And then I could do... How's that? So you guys like the round eyes better? We're just trying to make them look happy and friendly, not creepy, right? So which one? If you want, I can change these. So how would I change those to circles? I could paint over the black line and then add the circles, or I can just make the circles under it like their eyebrows, right? But you guys like the eyes open better? It makes the open eyes not creepy. Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> I love when you guys chat with me. It makes it way more fun when you chat with me. So, okay. I think I showed you guys all of the fun art supplies for today. So, um, Thank you guys so much again. So you guys, I am coming to you live. And you can watch this recorded as well. I just share with you guys my favorite products. Not just, you guys, this does not have to be done just on black. Oops. Let me um, show you real quick. So... Again, today I was really focusing a lot on creating on black, but you guys can easily do this on white too. So I want to show you. Again, here he is on white, he and she, or he's, or snow friends. And you guys can easily do it on the multimedia, mixed media. I don't know if I have it in this one pad as well but anyway it doesn't have to be on black but black's so fun if you guys have not tried creating on black you should definitely give it a try and again i want you to keep creating think outside the box explore try new things try new supplies right winter has just begun in cleveland ohio i don't know where you guys are but I tend to hibernate and I definitely do more creating in the winter time. Just, and so do people that I do my paint parties with in the summer, we're just enjoying the weather and in the winter we're hibernating and eating a lot of pasta. And, uh, but I do definitely create more at this time of the year. I create every day, but I just mean like, you know, hours longer. So thanks so much you guys for watching me. 
and um, I appreciate everything. So I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and you guys can follow me on social media, watch me on Amazon. Again, all my favorite products. I really appreciate you guys watching me, and I will stream again soon. Thank you.